Hello, folks. Well, we got a little bit of a different episode for you today, but one that we are super excited about. So you guys obviously know that we have a podcast because you're listening to the podcast, but we also have lots of other marriage resources within the Redeemed Marriage Ministry. And uh, some of you are familiar with our marriage coaching program. And so we offer that to as a way to encourage marriages. We have two different tracks, the Road to Redemption and also the Marriage You've Always Wanted. And so we do four weeks of coaching. And recently, we have just started where you actually can finish up those four weeks and then move straight into a new program that we call our Monthly Marriage Mentoring Program. And there's lots of stuff that uh, you kind of get as being a part of that uh, marriage mentoring group. But one of the things is that we do a monthly marriage mentoring Zoom call, and it's a community Zoom call. So all of the the couples that are members get on this Zoom call together, and we get a chance to speak to all of them at one time, some of our favorite people all in the same spot at the same time, and we get a chance to teach for about 30 minutes, and then we have about 30 minutes to where we can interact with each other, we can ask questions, we can pray for each other, so lots of great benefits for that. But here's what we're going to do for this week's episode. We are actually going to invite you, our listener, in to our marriage monthly marriage mentoring Zoom community call, and you're going to get a chance to listen to the teaching that we did for our most recent call. And uh, the topic is fun, and it is very entertaining, and we're going to be talking about becoming an expert on your spouse. And we're going to actually give you 20 questions that you should think about whether or not you know the answer to these questions about your spouse. So we want you to listen in. It's going to be a little bit different because we are speaking obviously to them, but at the same time, we want to give you a chance to see what it's all about. And here's the deal. If you are interested in something like this, please reach out to us. You can go to our website, uh, the contact form there, and we can give you some information about our marriage coaching. And then, obviously, that next step is to move you straight into our monthly marriage mentoring group. And it is a ton of fun. All right, so we wanted to let you in on that and let you be a part of it for this week's episode. So here we go. Okay, cool. So here's here's what we're going to talk about tonight. We're so excited about this. All right, so a couple of days ago, you guys may have seen, I posted on social media, uh, this post that said something to the effect of, which is really funny because Heather and I were walking maybe yesterday, and you kind of threw this into yes. the topic. Mm-hmm. And she said, she actually said, oh, that post that you did the other day. And I couldn't remember what I did, but I actually said, I don't do those posts. That's some robot doing that. But that's not true. I really do all the posts. He does um, all the posts. And so Heather Heather said it, it had something to do with your spouse was not intended to be enough mm-hmm. um, for you. And so that hit home to Heather. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know. I made the post, but it hit home to Heather. So she wanted to make sure that we that we led with that before we go into kind of the the, the big part of the yeah. topic. So it's super weird how sometimes some posts go crazy and then some posts you're like, oh, this is going to be a good one and there's no traction on it at all. But this one went really, really nuts. And I think because it struck a chord with a lot of people because it definitely struck a chord with me and has struck a chord with me in the past. Um, the old, I think it's Jerry Maguire movie. That says, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. that says, you complete, you me. complete me. And I'm like, Bleh. it doesn't happen that way. But in our minds, it does happen that way. Like I can remember thinking, I am not happy because Rusty's not making me happy. Mm. Like I am not feeling complete because Rusty's not making complete making me complete. And not only that, I think that's what got me into a lot of my trouble headed down the slope to infidelity is because I was looking for something to complete me and to make me feel 
fulfilled. And of course, now looking back on that, I know that that is a spot that is only designed for Jesus. Mm. Like my relationship with the Lord is supposed to completely fill me. So, so that to me is the most important important part of this teaching tonight in that I have to know my identity and my identity is in Christ. And if that identity is not complete, then I am going to always be searching for something or someone to fill that spot. And so as I was thinking about this and thinking about what we were going to talk to y'all tonight, and we're going in a little bit more fun direction with it in a few minutes, but I was like, we can't miss this part of it. Like we can't miss um, the fact that our spouse cannot, was not made to complete us. So um, I may have told a couple of you this, I may have even said it on a podcast before, but this is the image that I get is that we kind of have a cup, okay, that we um, walk around with that needs to be filled. And it is um, our job and our connection with the Lord to make sure that that cup is filled by Him all the time. So whether that's in our um, morning devotion time, um, through worship, like right now, my cup is completely overflowing. See, that's what it is. I'm <laughs> overflowing. You were making fun of me and Sorry, trying to get me I to settle down. I just needed you to I'm breathe. Um, but yeah, I mean, you're, my cup, that and w- through worship mu- music is a big way that I connect with the Lord. Um, and there's different ways that you can connect with the Lord. But for me, that's just a really big one. And so anyway... Um, We have this cup that we need to be filled at all times. And when um, you expect your spouse to fill that cup, they're going to always fail. Always fail because they weren't made to complete you um, or they weren't made to fulfill you. So if you have this image of just kind of walking around needing people to fill your cup, it just it never happens. And 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 it leads to disaster. But if your cup is full by your relationship with the Lord and your relationship with God, then when your spouse does something kind, your spouse does something that makes you happy, your spouse does something to fill your cup more than its overflow. And that's the most beautiful picture is because you get to then overflow onto your family overflow onto the people at work, overflow onto your spouse Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, because your cup is full. So there is absolute freedom in letting your spouse off the hook for that. Um, If your spouse is constantly feeling or if you're constantly feeling like, gosh, it's my job to make them happy and I'm not doing enough, a good enough job because they're not happy. Um, that brings lots of stress and so and unneeded stress. But if you are thinking um, and if you know that that's not your job, then that just kind of lets you off the hook and you can breathe and kind of enjoy re- your relationship and enjoy your marriage more. So I just encourage you to let your spouse off the hook in that area. Well, I can speak into that so much because before we established this new marriage after the trauma mm-hmm. that we went through, <clears throat> like that was me all the time. What the exhaustion of trying to um, be enough for her and to try to fill that cup constantly. Mm-hmm. And she will self admit that that was who she was before is that she was so dependent on me to make her happy. And It was like I was stuck in a hamster wheel. There was no way that I could completely satisfy her and meet all of her needs. And so... And uh, expectations. We've been talking about that a lot in that if you expect your spouse to do things for you that make you happy and keep your joy up, then what what you're doing is setting them up for failure And because you, it's a constant, I need this, I need this, I need this. What's the word? Expectation. Yeah, expectation. I think I just said it. (laughs) 
<laughs> expectation and you when when they don't meet it it's disappointment mm. and so you're living in this disappointment and then you think oh somebody else could make me happy yeah. and then that's just another lie from the enemy because you go to that you know other thing or that other person was in my case but it can be other thing it could be alcohol it could be any number a of the hobby. shopping I mean, yeah. <laughs> a hobby anything mm -hmm. that you think oh well this will make me happy and it's still not going to mm -hmm. because it's still not jesus mm -hmm. it's still not your relationship with the lord i interrupted you i'm sorry no that's okay hey see see you need to settle down <laughs> <laughs> no, I, but I felt, I felt that so much and it's just what Heather said, the freedom that finally comes when I get to look at my spouse and look at Heather and go, you know, she doesn't really need me. Like she, she is, she is true. She knows who she is in Christ. Like Christ is enough. If everything else was stripped away from her she she mm. is just fine. But then for me to come along beside that and go, all right, the stuff that I do just adds so much. And the more that I add to her, just like she said, it's an overflow that I get the results of. That's so right. like the harder I work, the more I get out of it. And and not only that, but I'm blessing her in a way that then she's able to bless other people because she's overflowing. And so it's almost as if by me pouring into her, I'm blessing other people too through her. And so it's it's the most freeing thing, though, to know I'm not responsible for mm -hmm. her happiness and I'm not responsible for her joy. Now, I can make her mm -hmm. happy, and I do make her happy, mm -hmm. right? You so do. <laughs> but I'm not responsible for That's that. Right. And it's so freeing to know that. Now, That's right. here's where we're going to twist here's the things. Fun here's part. where we're going to twist things around a little bit. We're actually going to twist things around a little bit and now we're going to talk about how much fun it is and in a way how important it is to really pour into your spouse. Yep. Now, again, this is all under the foundation of what we just talked about that it's extra. It's gravy. Like this is this is the extra and what makes uh, what makes your marriage fun. And mm -hmm. so, you guys have probably heard us talking. You we've we've done it on coaching calls. We've done it on podcasts. But we talk about um, becoming an expert on your spouse. Who did you hear that from? So I'm the pretty first time? I'm pretty sure. And, and some of y'all that are that are watching, you might can nod. But I'm pretty sure it was the Levi Lusco, the the book that Jenny and Levi Lusco, the um, marriage devotion book. I'm pretty positive it was there. Could have even been a Levi Lusco sermon, but um, but I'm pretty sure it was Levi Lusco that said he has a. Um, a note in it. See, some of them are nodding because they've read the book with us. <laughs> but he he has a um, a note in his phone that says becoming a Jenny Lusco expert. Mm -hmm. And so I started doing that. And I've got a note in my phone. It says becoming a Heather Bryant expert. And so I've got this list of stuff. Um, we even did a podcast on it one time where I could I could well I actually did it live in front of everyone and I listed the top 10 things that that I know make her happy <laughs> and I nailed it didn't I you did you expert did. but I have because our communication is so good <laughs> oh yeah I know exactly what makes her happy That's she right. tells me mm -hmm. um, but I have this list in my phone and it's a list of 10 10 things that are um, that I know will make her happy now I've said this before but for a woman, that number one could drop to number 10 tomorrow and number 10 could be number one tomorrow. For me, I got like one thing and it stays number one all the time. So I'll keep telling her, I'm like, there's, you can't get any easier than that. That's like, right. you know, so I know what your one thing she is. She knows what my one, you they, got, everybody <laughs> knows what your one thing is. <laughs> You've made that abundantly clear. I have. Um, but this list has so much more than that because it has those 10 things and on the, on those 10 things, it's stuff like, um, I know that for her, if I do dishes, she loves it. If I do laundry, she loves it. If I make sure that everything has a home, she loves it. 
You know, there's there's all of these things that I just know that she loves. But then there's some smaller things like I know what her favorite candy is. I know, you know, and I make that, I keep that list. Well, the other thing I do is I'm constantly taking notes. So if we see something or we're out somewhere and she's enjoying something and she's like, oh, this was fun. Well, I can put it in my notes so I don't forget because I'm a guy. I forget. So I'll put something in my notes. If she says, ooh, I really like that. That's really pretty. I wish I, you know, maybe one day I'll have that shirt or whatever. I'll take a picture of it and I'll put it in my notes. Okay, and, okay. We're going to see how good you are. Yes, we're about He's to He's talking fi- real big. I am talking big. Okay, so you need a <laughs> notes section in your phone. But everybody does. Yes, even, everybody does. Even yeah, you. Yeah, you don't have a notes section because you just have one thing. <laughs> Please, I'm not that simple of a person. <laughs> you are, you are. Okay, you are. <laughs> okay, so um, we're gonna give you some ideas. Okay, yes, so y'all this, jot these down. We're gonna. We'll also send this list to everybody. But yep. but if you got something to write with, this is gonna be fun because. You're going to hear a list of... And he doesn't know the list all of the way. Well, I made a few of them. Yeah. I made a few of them. She made a few of them. But neither one of us know know what the answers are. So here's... Wait, do I have to give you the answers too? <laughs> yes! <laughs> Shoot! <laughs> How did you, did you think this was a one way? Yes. It's not a one way. It's not a heart talk. People. Oh no. no. Okay. So, okay. Okay. I can do this. So here, so here's the, this is going to be the fun part. You guys are going to get to jot down some questions. Basically what we did, we just came up with like 20 random kind of questions that are like, I should probably know that about my spouse. Now we're not putting anybody on the spot. You don't have mm-hmm. to do this right now. Mm-mm. There might be some elbows thrown <laughs> during this, but but you're gonna write down the. You can write down the question, and it's really just for you to kind of start thinking. Do I know that? Like, how well do I really know my spouse? Some of these are going to be super easy. Some of them are going to probably, you probably won't know them because I'm not sure I know them. We're going to do it in real time for you guys. So so the, the way this is fun on two levels is you're learning something, but you're also fixing to find out a lot about us. All right? Well, and they're learning. Don't hold it against us. You're yeah. also learning this is just 20 things that you should know about your spouse, but y'all can also come up with more. Oh, it's yeah. not just these 20 things. They just, these just have, you could be like, yeah, that doesn't apply to us. And that's fine too. Okay. Are All you right. ready? Yeah. Cause we're going to have to, we're going to okay, fly through Okay. Them. First right. one, favorite Starbucks drink. Okay. So I know that you have a hot and a cold drink. Oh, yeah. so the, the hot drink is a white chocolate mocha. Correct. The cold drink is, um, the strawberry acai, but it's like half water, half lemonade. Bammo. Okay, your favorite Starbucks drink is um, strawberry acai with just water because you're not the biggest lemonade fan. It's too sweet. Don't correct me because I'm right. <laughs> mm, I do like it better, with, but, I, but I'd like the lemonade. Half and half? Half and okay. half, too. And so. then you do not like coffee, so you would do a spiced apple cider. You got it. Crushed okay, it. So okay. Far, so good. Favorite fiction genre. Okay. Shoot. I didn't know I was going to have to answer these. Okay. <laughs> I think. Yeah, you got to answer first on this. Yeah, one. I do. I think that you like. Shoot. <laughs> I'm going to say psychological thriller. Yeah, that's that's okay. definitely what I like reading as I, I say chill when I'm chilling yeah. to go to sleep. I don't know how you chill reading psychological thrillers, but um, I'm actually going to say that for you too right now. Mm-hmm. Um, even though you love some some good Christian fiction books I too. Sure do. But sometimes That's they're what a I'm little, on right now. Sometimes they're cringy. They're not cringy. That was my take on it. All okay. right, sorry. Okay. okay, book currently reading. Okay, you are the known... You have five books you're reading right now. I don't know if it's five, but... Okay, I, well, we're three. obviously reading. We're on our last two days of the same... New marriage. New same marriage, couple. same couple. Yep. And you are also reading a psychological thriller that I've already read, and I can't remember the no, name of it. No, no, you haven't read it. It's a new oh. one. <laughs> 
but it, um, I don't know the name of it either. I, okay. It's on my Kindle, so I have and no your, idea. What and the your name current is. reading plan that you're doing through Wait, the Bible. That's a whole nother one. Oh, sorry. Don't go there. Okay. Um, yes, we're both reading New Marriage, Same Couple, so I know we're getting that right. I have no, you're reading some psychological. No, I'm not. I'm reading okay. the Colleen Coble Christian fiction that you just called cringe. I hope she's not listening. I got that wrong. Okay. Well, usually okay. you're reading that. All right. Here we are go. y'all writing these down? Okay. Of course they are. Least favorite chore. Okay. I'm going to say that it has anything to do with the bathroom. Correct. All right. I can't stand to clean the potty, <laughs> especially with three boys in the house. It's disgusting. Why can't y'all aim? <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Got getting, some head we're nods. A lot on of those. head nods That's for right. some women. Okay. Um, like your least favorite chore is going to be sweeping. <laughs> How in the world did you get that? Because you never do it. I, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Come on. Okay. Come on. I would have, yeah, I didn't think you would ever okay. get that. Okay. Next one to write down favorite food fajitas. Yours is fajitas. You got it. Yours is steak. Correct. Okay. Um, actually, I probably, if I'd thought about that long enough, I might no, would have said sushi. Mm -mm, it's okay. Steak. All right. Um, my favorite gift. Yeah. Oh, I got, you don't even know what your favorite gift is. Let me tell you what your favorite gift okay. is. It's an E. Newton oh, bracelet or earrings. Or <laughs> <laughs> Do you see my, oh, this is my P28, but I'm a little obsessed with E. Newton. I'm showing them. Yeah, there's a mic right there. Well, I know, but I'm showing <laughs> my people here. Um, your favorite gift is a Home Depot gift card. I guess. I don't. You don't I, like gifts. I don't like gifts, so I could care less. But, okay. okay, the way you connect with God. Oh, I got this one. The way you connect with God is that you love to be in nature. You got it. Uh, you. I are, just told all of them how I yeah, connect with yeah, God the most. You want to be in the presence of God. So yep. you worship music, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Stress points at work. Ooh See, this is, I put this on here because you need to know what your spouse is. The reason why I thought about this I don't know if y'all ever watch Friends, but I think it's hilarious whenever they say, what does Chandler do? And nobody knows what Chandler mm -hmm. does at work. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling some of you might not know what your spouse does. I know the work. people in the middle. He doesn't know what she does at work. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. They may not Jenna have the same Oh, yeah. Order. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I just Levi? said, yeah, okay. sorry. Not <gasps> Jenna and Levi Lusco. Oh, no, no it's Jenny. <laughs> it's Jenny. Sorry. They're on our call. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go. Sorry. You're supposed to, what's my stress points okay. at work? I think, well, but a lot of them may listen to our podcast. I think your stress point is where are people who don't read your emails. Okay. And then good. they ask you questions. We don't care. Okay, good. <laughs> Um, they don't read your emails and then they, um, ask dumb questions cause they didn't read the email. I probably have a lot of stress points, so I'll take that. Okay. Cause I don't really know. I don't okay. have just one. Uh, let's see. Oh, dream vacation. Wait, you didn't do my stress point. Yes, I did. Wait, I didn't. No, no I didn't. Oh, it's like the little kid that you had to stick under the table today because <laughs> Because he wasn't following directions. <laughs> See, we communicate all through the day. She sends me a picture of this kid under a table and is like, you see what I'm dealing with right now? I think it was about the time I said, hey, have you thought about some more questions for tonight? Mm -hmm. And she said, no, do you see what I'm doing? <laughs> exactly. Okay, dream vacation. Uh, Come on. Come on. Somewhere in the mountains. Come on. Y'all just, y'all just, she Montana? got, she got, I just went to Montana last Costa week. Rica. <laughs> I'm going to Costa Rica in two days. <laughs> Alaskan cruise. Oh, sorry. So I would say for you, I think it might be like Italy. Yes. I said it right with you when you said that. <clears throat> Crushing it. All right. Shoe size. You wear an eight and a half. I might say, I don't know this one. I'm going <sighs> to, I'm going to guess. Can I guess? Can I guess an eight? No, I would be scrunched up toes. Oh, nine. Yes. Okay. All right. I was close. I was um, one off. 
<sighs> yeah, but there's a whole half a size in there. See, I hope y'all know each other's shoe size. You probably don't, but there we go. They're telling each other right now. Good. I can see it. <laughs> all right, Bible reading plan. Yeah, we do a Bible reading plan through our church, and they're all different. So I know what yours is. You're doing the chronological plan. Yeah, you're doing the two-year plan. Yes, two Yay. years. All right. Um, what time is their alarm set? I know, I know, I know. He sets his alarm for 6.30 because I have to leave at 6.45 and you get up and you do my coffee. 6.40. You do all that in five minutes? No, you never leave at 6.45. That's why. (laughs) (laughs) I know these things. Okay, I'm going to have to be honest. I have no idea what time you wake up. come on. However... Two nights ago, when I can't, you you had gone to sleep before me because I was stress points at work. I was working too late, so I was staying up late and I was working. I came to I came into the bedroom and the your phone was on my bed on my pillow. Yeah, so I had to go over and plug it in and stuff. And I went, ooh, I wonder if her alarm set. So I pulled up the clock and I saw five thirty. And I was wrong. Like, ooh. What? That's what I did. You woke up late that day. Then <laughs> it. I set my alarm for five twenty one every morning so that I can hit snooze one time. For nine minutes, and then I get up at 5.30. That's 30. brilliant. All okay. right. <laughs> you, eh, eh, you got that one wrong. Okay. Uh, ideal bedtime. Ooh. Your ideal ba- bedtime is going to be 10 o'clock. Ooh, that's pretty good. But I actually, I probably would have gone a little later because I'm okay with that. What about? Ooh. I'm going to say 9.30 for mm, you. I'd have said 9. Mm. I'm an ideal. Wait, that does really. that mean... Getting in the bed or getting in the bed to read. Ah, that doesn't okay. matter. <laughs> um, favorite podcast. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello. This one was for y'all, just so y'all could get to tell each uh-huh. other that we're your favorite podcast. All right. <laughs> Drive through sweet treat. You don't like sweets. No, I don't. I don't like sweets. So, so that's not a good so one. So you got that right. Yours would be just a drive through. I would say Chick fil A ice cream. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, yes. All right, just a couple more. Favorite genre of music. Favorite genre of music. One hundred. I don't know if this is a genre, genre, but yours is one hundred percent eighties music. Yes. Is that a genre? I'm a child of the eighties, y'all. Uh, <laughs> yours is gonna be country music, probably. Yep. Oh, I can't stand it. And Sorry. if you can combine country and worship. Oh, I thought you were gonna say country and eighties. No, eighties country. <laughs> Country in worship, golden. <laughs> There's a few of those out there. All right, let's see. Uh, preferred ju- exercise, run. Uh, preferred exercise method, for those of you who did not hear this. Oh, sorry. Um, yes, mine is run. Yours is bar. Not, Correct. Not the bar. Correct. Bar, as in the little dance kind of mm-hmm. thingy. And that those people are legit. They got me ready for skiing. Legit. I got to, my quads were ready for skiing. Oh, well, okay. This- this we only have apply, four more. This won't apply to me. No, you don't like flowers. <laughs> I don't need Your you to bring me flowers. Type of flowers. Please don't bring me flowers. <laughs> Your favorite type of flowers are those who are not go those that don't need to be plucked out of our flower bed. Mm, you don't like to weed. I do not like to weed. Okay. Yours are daisies. Correct. Okay. Um, two, three more. Gas station treat. <gasps> Gummy. Lifesavers. Oh, nailed it. Yours is um, Milk Duds. Correct. What if they don't have Milk Duds? Because a lot of gas stations don't have Milk Duds. Rolos. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> um, we might be at, this might be 20 and 21. Are we on we 20? They don't know. They're not. They, uh-huh. Oh, yeah. She said okay, we're on 20. This is about to be 20. Oh, no. We need to combine them. No. Your favorite non-sexual touch during a TV show. <laughs> Favorite favorite non sexual touch. I know what I know what yours is. Really? Well, no, because it's a lot of them. It's either back rub, playing with your hair, or rubbing your feet. Ooh, I love all of those things. But if I had to guess a favorite, I would say a hug. Whoa! I love to hug. No idea that was <laughs> coming right then. <laughs> all right. Okay. Non sexual touch. Every touch with you leads to sexual. <laughs> um, a hug? I mean... You don't like me to touch... Well, I don't like to touch your feet. <laughs> if, whatever you're doing, if it's flirting. Flirting. Like tap you on the butt? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then favorite TV show? Oh, gosh. This one's hard, actually. 
Um, like if I'm just chilling around the house or even cleaning, what TV show do I like on in the background? Well, I know that in the past, like your all-time favorite TV show That's might have been about. Gilmore Girls. Correct. Ding, okay. ding, 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 ding. Okay, your favorite TV show, 24. Ooh, that's good. I do like 24, but I thought you were going to say something more like just when you have to come in and turn it on really, real fast. That Friends. King of Queens. King of King Queens. Of Queens baby. Oh, sorry. Okay. So, mur, mur, mur. Um, I should have stopped with non sexual okay, touch. But we're also not perfect. So yep. there you go. Now you know that we're not perfect. But that was fun. I hope you guys kind of got some ideas of some things you need to know about your they spouse. They didn't need us to do this to know we weren't perfect. <laughs> true and there you go guys i hope that you all enjoy just that little taste of what we do with our marriage mentoring group and like we said at the beginning if you're interested in knowing more about the redeemed marriage just visit the website at theredeemedmarriage.com and you can see all of our resources that we offer right there in one place see you next time